Okay, we're going to see if I can paint rock. This is my palettes. That's just some of the colors that are out for now. And I haven't added the black yet, so I'll put some black out. And these are the two rocks that I'm going to attempt to kind of play with. And I'm going to just brush mix some blue and white. And here I'm going to do a sky. And I just kind of hit and miss adding the color on the top of the rock. Just kind of get it a base coat color put down. Then I'm going to touch back into just a little of the full strength blue and add just a little of that to create some variation in the shades of blue in the sky. So we'll let that one dry and this one all I did on this rock was just added some white just across the front of it. And I'm going to do the sky the same way. Put down kind of a base color and then add just a little darker blue. And rinse that out of that brush. Then I'm going to take an angle brush and picking up just a little bit of white on just one corner of the brush and I'm going to kind of blend it just a little bit so that it's not too bold and then using kind of a little C stroke and the side loaded angle brush. I'm going to brush in some clouds or what I like to refer to as clouds and each time it begins running out of paint I go back and add a little bit more and you do have to have a little bit of moisture in your brush to do this so when I feel my brush getting dry I just touch into a tiny little droplet of water that's on the side of my water container and re-moisten the brush and need to add some to the other rock. And I'm trying to make sure that y'all can see this because I can't really see the camera with a, my phone that well. Okay, then I want to add a few more here and there on this rock. have to make sure as I hold it I'm not wiping off something that I just painted on it. And these clouds really don't have a, there's nothing special to them or about them. It's just using the side load of paint on the brush and kind of making these little almost as if you were writing a C and making the little strokes. Ooh. He will kind of sort of stand up when he's done. Then if I feel like I have lost any of the sky, I go back with just a little bit of the blue color and I can add just a little bit back into some of those areas just to help make the clouds 
pop out and where the sky doesn't end up looking so white. And you can do that as you need to, just kind of randomly. Okay, now I'm going to paint a little kind of grass line or meadow line here. I do that. I've just got two shades of green, just a darker green and a kind of a medium green kind of mixed on the brush just so that it's not all one color at one time. And then I want a little bit of the darker at the bottom. So I'll go back in and just pull some of that dark green and we'll let that one sit there and dry and this one we're going to do the same thing but I'm going to lay the dark green in at the bottom first then come on sit up then I will pick up the lighter green color and just kind of do the, I call it the little back and forth hit and miss kind of motion for, because all we're wanting right now is just to get some color on there. And then you can smooth some of that out as you need to. Okay. And I end up doing a lot of my painting with my little angle brush just because I like the fact that if I don't want or need paint all the way across the brush, I can put it just on that tip right there and still get all of the painting kind of details out of it that I want. Okay, we're going to attempt this on this little brush, and we're going to see if we can. I've just got the paint loaded on the whole chisel edge of the brush. I'm just doing some little dabbing and up and down kind of motion to create some, some kind of tree line in the background. Nothing too specific, just random trees. If you've ever watched any Bob Ross painting, he does this kind of stuff to create background trees. And that's where I learned it from, and I just adapted it to my acrylic painting versus his, his oil painting. So... That gives us the little row of background trees. Then I'm going to, I'm going to take a kind of a bright color and come right up under that. And you'll notice when I did that, it pushed the trees back a little bit further. So that one needs to dry. This one, I'm going to do the trees a little differently. I'm going to take this, I think it was like a number four flat, maybe. Well, this is a number six, but most of my number fours, I think, are about like that. But we're going to take that. It's one of my kind of go-to scruffy brushes that I use and do this a lot with. And we're going to very similarly except these are going to be bigger trees, and we're just going to dab, 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 and keep a fair amount of paint on the brush, because only so much is going to come off as you do this. And just add the tree line. Let's see, i got to get this thing where I can hold it. And 
and just place those trees all around. the rock and alright now you're supposed to be sitting up and then you can kind of tell already on this one you've got your your sky effect and then you've got your tree line and this one I'm going to rub in the darker paint at the base of the trees and this is just stuff I just do out of my head just because I like little landscape scenes. And so I do things that, I don't know, it's kind of, it's, I call it my mind's eye painting. And I forget what artist I got that from, but he used to say, close your eyes and imagine what you're looking at. And then open your eyes and paint it, or do a sketch of it and then paint it. And so that's what I started doing. Let's see, I'm trying to remember how to how I want to get my little cabin on here. I'm trying to block it in with some white so that it'll show up over the top of the trees and not look like it has trees growing inside it. And I do this just with the white acrylic paint. When I do a lot of detail work, I don't do a whole lot of talking or I actually sometimes hold my breath so that my breathing doesn't cause me to, <gasps> oops, make a boo-boo. So now I'm going to take the black and pick up just enough that I can kind of streak down that, the front and the side and make the, um, make it look like old boards or wood and get out just a little bit of a brown color here and trying to come up with something to kind of look like a little rusty rusty tin roof color and a I think that looks pretty good, that shade. I usually use a color of paint called Burnt Sienna to do most of my roofs and things like that when I paint. And for some strange reason, I have evidently run out and did not realize I didn't have a spare bottle. So... can make this roof not not look quite so jagged. Okay, there we go. Now we have to give him a little door. So let's paint a little door there. And we'll paint two little windows. And we're not after a whole lot of exactness here. You just want something that gives the eye the idea that that is there. And then we will take I just put a touch of black and t I don't know where my dark brown paint is either but we're going to kind of give a little path leading up to the little barn door and I've got to add just a touch of black shadow right there to kind of separate the front 
from the back and to put the kind of the roof overhang if you will okay there we go I think that will work for now and I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow color and that green and make a just a really light yellowish green just to add some little grassy stuff right up under the the base of the barn and then pull in some grass on either side just to kind of create some more depth in there. Okay, now I will I don't want to really do a whole lot more to this because it's so small. So I'm going to do just a few little fence posts right here. And let's see. Let's here, I have to put the little caps on the fence posts. Pull in some little kind of bobbed wire looking stuff there. And then we will take this brush again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put red on one side and white on the other. And then I'm going to take the brush and kind of dab it up and down. To soften both of those colors. I don't want to lose my white since the red is so strong. And then we're going to attempt to add, and I do this just with a dabbing motion, and it adds the little field of flowers there. And then we're going to call that one done. So this one. The only other thing we're going to do to it is we're going to add the flowers the same way, but I'm going to use a few different colors to do it because we want this one to kind of be like a, a meadow of flowers. So there's some with the red and white and then we're going to do the blue and white and we'll just come right into that area and add in the the blue and white dabbed on flowers and then I've got a little bit of purple color here. And we'll see if these purple ones show up for us. Yeah, I think that's going to show up pretty good. So we're going to add some purple flowers in there. And then where I've left these little spaces here, we are going to do, or attempt to do, get the paint loaded on my brush. We are going to come in and place a couple of rocks. And how I do the rocks is I just use a brush that's loaded with the both the light and the dark color and then just do some little strokes over that so we'll rinse that brush I thought I had a little smaller brush up here but evidently I don't 
I removed it and I'm not sure where it's at. Okay, so now I'm going to use that same brush, but I'm going to put the paint on it differently. The white at the top and the dark at the bottom. And I'm going to kind of enhance the blue flowers with that rock behind them. And the thing just did not want to stand up for me. And here we will do the same with the purple. I like to think of these as kind of like faux hydrangeas maybe. Um, where the colors just kind of blobbed on like that. But then when this dries, it looks really, really cool. Okay, and then this little part here. I'll carry that right up under that blue there. And that pretty much will finish that rock off. So here you've got just a, a cute little scene on that one. And then this one just has a little scene with just the flowers going around it. And that is the exact same way I painted these two rocks. And this just has the little scene. And I did add a little piece of fence on this one. And then this rock, I didn't paint anything back here because I've designed it to sit and be looked at that way. And that's how I did that one. So that's how I painted my rocks.